My hero's final chapter is here. All for one is dead. Okay, this time he's actually dead. His ghost died too. Like th this, this is the final time, okay? And Deku, the number one hero, has saved Tenko Shimura from himself. Yes, 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 yes. yes. This was a hard fought battle for Deku, where Bro lost both of his arms and every quirk. Then All For One's crusty ass rears itself out again as his quirk's final embers. It looked like the villains had won, but the Avengers were summoned with Aizawa and UA students appearing right behind Deku, ready to help him face down the Demon King once and for all. What I'm talking about. This was all thanks to Kurogiri, or rather Shirokumo. Aizawa and Mike's pleas to this nomified corpse finally resonated with the little remaining vestige of their long lost friend. But at the same time, this could be Kurogiri's programming to always save Shigaraki. So when All for One completely took over Shigaraki's body as his parental figure, it pissed oh. off Teleport Man. Regardless, a bunch of heroes appear, ranging from Class 1A, 1B, Pro Hero heroes, even this random second year girl from season 2. Oh my god, who the hell cares? Of course, Ball's the prediction comes true once again because Eri helped recover Deku's arms through her detached horn given to Aizawa. Obviously, they weren't going to bring a literal child to a war zone, so this was the next best thing. However, alongside the arms, Deku gets one of the biggest power-ups in the entire series. He gets his men's non-no-name Series 5 One Size All Might shirt. What is this name, bro? This brings the story of the fanboy Deku full circle where he has all might right by his side as he saves the irredeemable Shigaraki. All hope is not lost though because Deku might be quirkless but he still has embers of the base one for all still remaining. No extra quirks taken from other users just Deku's training with the stockpile quirk is available to him. This state is also similar to all might during his last fight with all for one meaning that after this battle Deku will just be a normal 16 year old kid. At this point, All For One is just done with it all, okay? He lost his perfect vessel, lost the ability to finally take his little brother's quirk, and now the brat he just defeated is standing back up again with a freaking army. <laughs> This dude just starts throwing a hissy fit and activates his all quirk factor once again. But this time, Bakugo isn't there to stop it. Oh no, what's gonna happen? Let's be real. Despite the sheer amount of pressure he's putting on them, Deku and his allies don't falter. It's here where Deku's defining quality is truly exposed to not only all for one, but us. He embodies what it means to be a true hero in the purest way. He'll constantly put himself in harm's way to help others, even putting himself himself and his body second. Through these actions of selflessness, Deku has become a symbol just like All Might. His care for the people around him, especially for his classmates throughout the story, has given him this chance to send it against Shigaraki. Ironically, this is what All For One calls Izuku's weakness and yet it allows all of these heroes who in the eyes of All For One are nothing but corpses to be killed, they keep moving forward and persevere as Deku has become their light. This time ties back to my hero's central themes of what it means to be a true hero, as Deku will still be recognized as the best even after this fight. Being quirkless doesn't matter, as it was Deku's heart and soul that was the most important. This is like my Valorant games guys, I might be bottom frag, I'm still telling my team, yeah let's go, we can win it. That's how we win, okay? That's how we win. I'm almost silver. <laughs> And speaking of important, we get a look at the two most important people in Deku's life. First, his Puki Uraraka, who wishes him good luck, then his mom cheers him on as the number one hero. Both of these moments propel Deku into landing a hit on All For One, and his body isn't regenerating as usual, and all these heroes jumping at him made Deku's own presence be hidden from danger sets. Even the bozo's mental state is cooked because his little baby brother is gone, oh no! You know how he kept saying Yoichi the first user was dependent on him, the big brother? Well it turns out All For One was more dependent on his little bro because that was his goal. Every other goal, even taking over the world, seems hollow in comparison to getting his brother back. We then go 
back all the way back to the beginning, where All Might states a weak body wouldn't be able to handle One for All's power. So with All for One now having 9 users cultivated power means that his body just can't withstand it all. So he is desperately trying to keep his body together using various different quirks as he believes he hasn't achieved anything yet. That his demon lord dream must be absolute. But what are you saying? <laughs> you single handedly ruled the world's underground for a century and you're still not satisfied. This dude is so greedy bro. Man get your stupid ass on. This man just refuses to die bro. Die already. It's been 422 freaking chapters. This manga should have ended 100 times. Anyway as All for One refuses to die he says that he'll just start her over again and plan to transfer All for One to Deku or some other hero to take over their body. But we don't want my hero Shippuden. So he moves towards Deku but all of a sudden Kurogiri moves first opening a portal between Deku and All for One wanting to protect and save Shigaraki. He tells Mike and Aizawa that he's sorry but Mike realizes it's just like Shirokumo to reach out and help. Kurogiri then demands All for One to give Shigaraki back that his friends are waiting for him and he has people who care about him. But then as Kurogiri begins to disappear Bakugo shows up. Oh you thought he was gonna miss the final battle? Hell no. <laughs> this is dynamite bro. We find out that oh Todoroki number three is still there to help. Bro, bro made a ramp for dynamite uh, so he could get here. <laughs> Dude, the disrespect to Todoroki, man. This is crazy. Anyway, Bakugo propels Deku, who then lands his final smash, telling All for One he's no demon lord, just a lonely man. Okay, real quick though, like Todoroki making the ramp for Bakugo and then him propelling Deku. Like Horikoshi is trying to show that this final All for One is a team effort. Anyway, back to this horrendously down bad man. He starts yapping about how he wants to see his brother's face one last time. So all this time taking over the world, plan with Shigaraki, being the demon king none of it mattered like a child all for one was just fixated on his toy that was his little brother yoichi this dude is just a bum who realized he drove his little brother away and now wants him back while selfishly claiming the world as his he has no reason to do it beside the fact that he's a greedy asshole and now deku has shown him that he holds no power over anyone in the vestige world yoichi appears as the flame of one for all telling his brother that it's time to let both of them finally rest and for him to pay for the crime of using so many people and exploiting the world. We then see all the one for all users plus Shigaraki's vestige coming out of the shadows and Deku and Tomura together land the final punch. And just like that my hero's central theme of the next generation taking charge is once again showcased on full display. Despite being a hero and a villain Deku and Shigaraki come together to end this old plague that had spread darkness around the world for too long. All Might and the heroes realized that the world was now Deku's generations and let them cook. Bro, they're, they're still first years though. Like, why couldn't we have gotten a time skip? Like, they should have at least been like seniors. Like, even better if they were like out of school, you know, as heroes for this final. Why couldn't we get a like a two year time skip after the first war, you know? With that, the Demon King finally disappears, leaving just Deku and Shigaraki. Tomura tells Deku that he thought he had been completely swallowed up by All for One, but Nana's vest connected with him and prevented him from disappearing which finally gives Nana's character peace as she was finally able to be there for her family. Shigaraki also realizes that he didn't manage to destroy anything that he wanted. Deep inside he was just a crying boy meaning he finally admits that he's Tenko. Shigi's final message to Deku is to ask him to tell Spinner that he fought to destroy until the end and Deku tells him he destroyed what he needed to being all for one. In the end both sought destruction of the same thing. Deku wanted to save his friends from the horror of the villains. Meanwhile, Shigi at the end wanted to destroy the root of all his misery, which he thought was society's fault, but instead it was all due to all for one. We then return to the real world, where Deku has completely destroyed Shigaraki's body, which has been turned into dust, and the war comes to an end. Now, let's be honest here. This was always going to be how things end. Deku didn't fail as a hero by saving Shigaraki. He 
he was able to save Shigaraki in the end by freeing him from All for One, the one who controlled every aspect of his life. Shigaraki did everything he did because he felt like Hero Society was hypocritical because no hero ever came to save him, but instead it was All for One. However, now that we know All for One planned out Tomura's entire life from birth, it makes All for One that true plague of Shigaraki's life. So Deku freeing him from his master's control even through death makes him the number one hero. Something not even the seventh user or entire conglomeration of heroes could achieve. However, that still doesn't invalidate Shigaraki's views, as Hero Society was very flawed due to prejudice, discrimination against people with evil quirks, or just being quirkless. And of course, the Hero Association caring more about the image of heroes than actually saving people in order to keep the status quo of all heroes are just, that was ruining society and creating more villains. The two's moral dichotomy, yep, I said the line, drove the first half of this series, but now Deku changed society, giving villains like Stain their answer that although All Might alone was a pillar of peace, Deku and his friends' victory together sends a message that there is a whole new generation of All Mights in the making. Honestly, this ending for Shigaraki makes sense. Deku gave him peace, yet all of his heinous actions are still not excused. He killed thousands, ravaged cities, and almost created a countrywide disaster by trying trying to destroy Mount Fuji. Even if you say, oh, it was all all for once manipulations, that doesn't excuse Shigaraki for his decisions. This is a grown up man. He didn't have to go along with his master's plan, yet he played right into his hands. Shigaraki's actions are his own and he has to live with that. His death was inevitable. He was always going to die because someone as monstrous as him wouldn't be afforded a second chance at life. Redemption through death was the only way. Deku saved him by freeing him from all for one, but what's more important is that Deku became a symbol for the world while doing so just like All Might. I mean, all of America's heroes are on their way right now to help. Like, this dude changed America's mind. That's crazy. But where does the story go from here? Well, now, even without a quirk, Deku will be seen as the world's greatest hero due to his ability to rally others behind him, leading to an unparalleled era of heroism. I think we'll also see a time skip to where all of class 1a are adults and doing their job as heroes, with Bakugo most likely being labeled as the number one hero due to him still having his quirk. Remember, Deku never stated he was going to be the number one hero. It was always the world's greatest hero, which he became by destroying the world's greatest villain all for one. In fact, this entire story has been told to us from the future, and that we'll finally see Deku telling the story to people as an adult, reminiscing on his time as a hero and how he saved the world. Now, if you guys like this, watch this video on screen right now, which is another banger.